said one sec. Are you ready to go live just yeah. in case? Go. <clears throat> says we are live but i don't see one sec. you ready to go live just yeah. in case go <clears throat> and ah we are live kareen oh so wonderful i'm so thankful and so sorry for everybody for waiting for so says long so we live, welcome 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 and ready justin if you could just turn your volume go. off or turn <clears throat> off the uh, ah, youtube we are live kareen <laughs> Oh, so wonderful. I'm so thankful and so sorry for everybody for waiting for there. Okay, that was me. <laughs> okay, so welcome to our very first live stream of Creatures with Wings and Crawly Things. My name is Karin Davidson Taylor. I am with Royal Botanical Gardens, and my friend Justin also is with Royal Botanical Gardens. And Justin's going to help me with the program. We're going to be taking a quick look at what it makes an insect an insect. But before we do that, I just want to show you where we are in relation to each other. So I'm going to quickly switch over and show you our map. Just in case you're not sure where Royal Botanical Gardens is, very quickly. So Royal Botanical Gardens is this big, beautiful green area here. It's about 2,700 acres or 1,100 hectares. So big, you could fit 6,000 hockey rinks in there. It's a beautiful area of forests and marshes and all sorts of areas where you find lots of insects and other creepy crawly things. But I also want to acknowledge that there has been a long history and is a long history of the First Nations and Métis people here in the province of Ontario. I also want to pay respect to the Six Nations of the Grand River Territory and the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, the holders of the Treaty of the Crown for the lands that we are the stewards of. And I'm speaking to you today from the traditional territories of the Haudenosaunee, of the Huron-Wendat, and of the Anishinaabe. So we're here to talk about insects too. And we wanna find out a little bit what exactly an insect is. So we're going to play a quick little game. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna see a sentence. I'll read it out. If you agree, you're gonna give me a thumbs up. If you think no way, you're gonna give me a thumbs down. And if you think, oh, I'm not sure, you're gonna give me a sideways thumb. So let's start. And the first one we've got to do, let's get these things up here. Okay, here we go. Here's our first question. Insects have six legs. So think about it. Six legs, yes, no, maybe. I'll give you a chance to think about it. And the answer is, Yes, they do have six legs. So I've got some examples of some insects here. They've got like this six spotted tiger beetle. Look at those long legs, great for running and climbing over rocks and logs and stuff like that in the forest. Or how about this grasshopper with these great big jumping legs or perhaps a water beetle with these swimming legs. Or maybe you're looking at a fly. Now a fly is kind of cool because it's got feet that can climb on walls and on ceilings. It also has wings to fly with. So insects, sometimes the wings are obvious, sometimes they're not. But they have both wings and legs, all insects do. But the other thing about flies and some other insects too, is they taste with their feet. So Actually, can you show me what you taste with? Justin, how about you help us? Oh, uh, uh, that's, he just, uh, that's right. We're, it's your tongue. You taste with your tongue. Exactly. So imagine if you were an insect, you'd have tongues on your feet. Okay, let's take a look at another insect and, it, and its legs. And this actually relates to one of the questions that we got up from... Miss Carla's class and Miss Carly's class. And this question is about caterpillar legs. So let me show you some caterpillar legs. So I'm just gonna show you actually a little video. And this is one of my, I love this little video. This is a woolly bear caterpillar. And this little woolly bear caterpillar was 
walking along the trail right beside me. So I decided to take a little video. So there it goes charging along. Maybe you've seen a woolly bear caterpillar in the fall or maybe in the spring. It's been snuggling down in the leaves and the grass over the winter, but now it's coming out because it's hungry. But if we look at a woolly bear caterpillar underneath, we'll see that it's very different. So those red circles, those are actually where its insect legs are. Look at that one, two, three, four, five, six legs. I know you're saying, well, wait a minute, what about these? Well, those are what we call false legs or fake legs. They're just big muscles that help hold on to the plants. But these are the legs that it uses to move with. Okay, let's go to our next question. Insects have two antennae. Those are the things on the top of the head. So I'll let you think about it, give you a chance. Hmm, what do you think? Okay, let's find out. Yes, they do have two antennae. So we're gonna discover what they use those antennae for. So this tiger swallowtail, it's got those lovely big antennae here. And then look at this moth, whoa. Look at those big feathery antennae. Or I have a beetle right here. Let me see if I can find my beetle. There's my beetle right there. There it is. There's my beetle. Let's, let's go a little bit closer so we can take a look. Oh, we got a little dandelion seed. Let's take a look at those antennae. And look at that. It's like a bunch of little balls all in a row. So, Different insects have different antennae, but those antennae are all for the same thing. They all help that insect smell. So I have a question for you. Can you point to what you use to smell with? Hey, Justin, what do you use to smell with? Uh, yeah your nose that's right your nose absolutely but here's the thing we also do something else with our nose we yeah we breathe with our nose so i've got news for you and i don't want to shock anybody but insects don't have noses, no noses. So yeah, I know you're asking me, well, if they don't have noses, how do they breathe? Well, I'm gonna show you with the help of this butterfly. So I'm gonna switch over so you can see my butterfly. Now my butterfly is very, very large. So let me see if I can go back. This actually is one of the largest butterflies in the world. It's called a bird wing. And I'll just show you very quickly, but here, let me show you this. Let me show you this bird wing compared to this monarch. Look at that. So that bird wing butterfly is very big. Now I know one of our questions also from Miss Carla's and Miss Carly's class and it was about butterflies with having legs and wings. And you can see both with my monarch and my bird wing butterfly, they have both legs. See, it has legs too and wings. So they need both of those. So let's go back to our question about how butterflies breathe. So take a look. Now that is the abdomen. That's that great big part right there. Look at that. It's got all these little black spots are holes. And that's what it uses to breathe with. Those are their breathing holes or their spiracles. So that's what they're breathing with. And 
So if you were an insect, you might have noses on the top of your head and noses on the side of your body. Pretty strange. So we'll do one last question and it has to do with the body parts, but I'm gonna give you a hint. What I want you to do is I want you to count when you see my, me put my finger down on the parts of the, of the butterfly, you count. So here we go. Ready? Okay. All right. There's a hint for how many body parts there are. And let's see how people do. Here's the next question. Insects have three body parts. Yes? No? Maybe. Let's find out. What do you think? And yes, they do have three body parts. So let's take a look at my big old bumblebee. And the first part is the head right there where the eyes and the antenna and the mouth are. And then we've got the thorax with the wings and the legs. And then this other part, abdomen where the breathing holes are. So if you want to say this with me, head, good. Thorax, good job. And abdomen, nice job. Okay, so all those things. So two antenna, six legs and three body parts. That's what makes an insect an insect. So what I would like to do is I'd like to teach you a little insect song that's going to help you remember those things. And then we're going to get to some of your questions. So first thing we need to do is I have to sit back. I can't stand up. If I stand up, you won't see me. But I hope you are going to stand up and get ready to learn the actions and the song. So you're gonna repeat what I say and repeat what I do. Here we go. So this is the actions and the words. Head, thorax, abdomen, <laughs> abdomen, abdomen. Yeah, three times. Head, thorax, abdomen. Two antennae, six crazy legs. Okay, so I'm gonna sing the song and I think when you hear the song, you're gonna recognize the tune. So this is how it goes and you can practice the actions as I do it. And then we're gonna do it ourselves three times. So here we go. Head and thorax, abdomen, abdomen, abdomen. Head and thorax, abdomen, two antenna, six crazy legs. Oh, you did a good job, Justin. Okay, here we go. Three times. First, slow. Second, a little faster. Third, even faster. I'll count you in, okay? One, two, three. Head and thorax, abdomen, 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 head and thorax, abdomen, two and ten, a six crazy legs. Whoa, okay, can we go a little faster? Here we go. One, two, three. Head and thorax, abdomen, 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 head and thorax, abdomen, Two and ten, uh, six crazy legs. Oh my goodness. Okay, are you ready? Are you ready? Last time, even faster. One, two, three. Head and thorax, abdomen, abdomen, abdomen. Head and thorax, abdomen. Two and ten, uh, six crazy legs. Oh, you guys were so good. And I asked if you recognized that tune. So if you did, give me a thumbs up. Mm hmm but we were insects. This was the insect version of head and shoulders, knees and toes. So 
I know we got some wonderful questions from all sorts of people, and I'd like to try and answer as many as we can in the time that we've got. So Justin, what's one of the first questions you've got there? So one of the questions here is from the class of Miss, Miss Brooks Biddle, and their question is, why are insects so important? Ah, that is a great question. I love that question because they have, they have a really important job. We need insects for all sorts of things. So one of the things we need basically is our food. If we don't have insects, we don't have food. They're the ones that visit the flowers so that we can have apples, so that we can have things like pumpkins and squash. That's the special little bee called a hoary squash bee. Or tell you what, if you like chocolate, then that is a tiny little midge that, or a little tiny fly that visits that cacao flower but also all the other plants that are out in, in nature, they need those animals to cut those insects to come and visit them. Even beetles are great pollinators. But don't forget, oh, insects are sometimes food for other animals or other insects. Like this dragonfly, it's a great hunter of mosquitoes, but bats are also good mosquito hunters. And then this ladybug, anybody that's got a garden, they're going to love that ladybug munching on those little aphids because aphids are not what we want in our garden. So insects not only help pests, keep pests down, but they also are food for other animals, even <gasps> for plants like this Venus flytrap, you can find insects perhaps that way too. But here's the thing, a lot of people don't realize that insects also help move seeds from one spot to another. The trillium seed is moved by ants. It's a very special relationship. And not just trillium seeds, but violets, all sorts of plants in nature depend on insects to move their seeds. And then, oh, this is the part that I think is just wonderful. You know what, all those leaves that are on our ground, you know, they gradually disappear and they gradually disappear because of some very special insects that we have. And here, let me see if I can find some for you. And those insects are what help break down or help remove some of those things that are not exactly, you know, we, 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 have, we have insects that are at least animals that are related to insects that are important in the soil. And some of you may have done exactly what I'm doing lifting up a piece of wood and maybe, oh, do you see them? Right there, there's one right there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a little pill bug right there. Oh, oh, it's on the move, on the move. Oh, no, wait a minute, that's not, that is a, yeah, that's a little, that might be a little sow bug because of those little things at the back end of its body. That might be a little sow bug. So sow bugs and, and pill bugs are really hard to tell the difference. Oh, wait a minute, that, but look at that. They're not insects though. They've got, see how, they've got too many legs. But you know what? Those are the things that eat the leaves and munch on those leaves and stuff like that. And I think, Justin, I think that was related to a question from Miss Seibel's and Miss Zeraski's class. A kindergarten class was asking about pill bugs and potato bugs. That and is right. Ava from that class was asking, why is the potato bug called a potato bug? 
Well, that's a thing. I went and I did a little bit of research because I was curious about that too. And so sometimes when I looked at that, it sort of called a, they called the potato bug. Um, they also called it a cell bug. But I think there's a little bit of a confusion because sometimes a potato bug is actually looks like a beetle. So very different from this. So I think if we try and call these little guys cell bugs, then that's gonna help us sort of keep them straight. So a pill bug and a cell bug, they're related. Um, but a potato bug is more like a beetle. Mm -hmm. So let's find out if there's another question that we can answer. And I think we're yes. going, oh, I, I think it's from the same class. So yes, uh, another question now, you are showing a whole lot of different insects there, Karine. And Victoria from uh, Miss Siebel and Miss Zareski's class was wondering, are there a thousand different types of bugs? I think you are going to be genuinely surprised, Victoria, because there are actually close to a million types of insects. Do you know there are more insects in the world than any other type of animal or plant? Look at that. There's a million. So if you drew a, if you had a pie, half of that pie would be insects. And three, over 300,000 of those are beetles. So there are a lot of insects in the world. Absolutely. Okay, let's see if we've got another question that we can answer. So kind of related, uh, this is back to the class of Miss Brooks Biddle. They were wondering what is the biggest insect in the world and what is the fastest insect and how fast can it move? Okay, so I have to get out of my seat because I have to get something to show you. So I was, I was given as a gift, I was given as a gift, a very special collection of stuff. And here inside my collection, I have some very interesting beetles. Look at this. This is a Goliath beetle. Now it may not be the biggest insect, but it is the heaviest insect. Now, Look at those legs. Look and look, look at those, look at those tarts. Look at those claws. Whoa. Uh, I, I wonder if anybody can guess, maybe you're wondering, what do you think it eats? Hmm. This is a pretty big beast. And I wonder what it eats. I can see Justin thinking about it. Okay. And I bet there are some people that have got some suggestions. But I think you're going to be surprised when I tell you. Is it a great big hamburger, curry? No, it's not a hamburger. <laughs> no, it's actually, they eat fruit. These are fruit eaters. So where they live in the tropics, they eat lots of fruit. And maybe that's why, you know, they've got those big claws. And I'm just guessing, but they've got those big claws on their feet right there. That might be good for climbing up and getting that fruit, maybe helping to rip it open. But there is my Goliath beetle. There it is right there. There. But the other thing I was going to show you, and I, I'm going to have to sit down so that I can actually show this to you a little bit easier, more easily. There is another insect. And so, you know, we can say the biggest, and but there's also like that was the heaviest. There's, there is, it actually, can you do this for me while you're sitting there? Can you reach your arm out? Okay, reach your arm out. Can you imagine there is a stick insect that is as long as your arm? Absolutely. I, I have, I think I have a picture of it. Just let me just see if I've got my picture up here. So let's just see if it's here. Hold on. Hold on. Let me see if I got, oh, there it is. Look at that. Look how long that stick insect is. It's huge. Now, I know you asked about the fastest also. So the fastest is one of my 
favorite insects. And it's this one, the green darner dragonfly. And it can fly so fast. It can fly 78 or 75 to 85 kilometers an hour. And you may go, well, what is that? Well, think about this. When you are on the road traveling from one place to another, not in the city, faster than you would drive in the city, faster than a bus would go in the city, it's when you get out of the city that you can go that fast. Imagine, that's how fast they go. So these are very fast insects. Okay, I think we've got some more questions coming up. Yes, we do. And now we're on to one of your favorite uh, critters, Corrine, because we have a lot of questions about butterflies. Mm -hmm. So lots of Miss Dernan Boyle has a number of questions about uh, butterflies and caterpillars. Uh, so I'll just read them out to you uh, because they uh, are all pretty related and uh, you can probably go through them uh, one after the other. So first, why do caterpillars turn into butterflies? And then are you able to tell the difference between two butterflies or how can you tell if a butterfly is a girl butterfly or a boy butterfly? Okay, excellent questions, excellent questions. Okay, so let's just take a look. So I do have some slides, but I've also got some real things. So the, I'm gonna answer the girl butterfly and the boy butterfly one first. Okay, so I'm actually gonna use this one to help me show that. So what I have here is two monarchs. And this is the girl monarch, and this is the boy monarch. Now, when their wings are closed, it's sometimes difficult to tell, but the boy monarch has a little dot right here in its wing. So let me go a little bit closer so you can see that. See that little dot right there? That's the dot right there. And that's a special little dot that only the boy or the male monarchs have but you can see that, that what it looks like. There it is. The girls, nope, nope, that mark is not there. But this mark that's there, some people believe that it produces a chemical or something that's very attractive to female butterflies. Now the other questions, let's take a look at some of the pictures that I might have. And I know that one of the questions was about, this, about what covers the wings and how they get their color. And that color actually comes from their scales. So a butterfly is covered with these very, like almost like small, small little plates or scales. And when the light, so sometimes they're different colors, like the, the browns and the, 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 um, the browns and the reds and the blacks, those are all a special, what we call pigment called melanin. But sometimes that color that you see, that blue color, is sometimes because of how the light hits that feather. And to show you that, I'm going to use, I'm going to use a blue jay feather to show that. So if I move my blue jay feather a certain way, you see blue really brightly. If I move it another way, that blue isn't really obvious, but look at how it happens when I move it this way. It becomes very obvious. It's because of how the light hits the feather. And that's the same thing for a butterfly. It's how the light hits the feather that it makes all those wonderful colors. Now, you asked a question. Here we are. Here we are. Why do caterpillars turn into butterflies? Well, you know what? It has to do with what they're doing at that time. So caterpillars, all they do is eat, 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 poop, rest, eat, 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 poop, rest. So what their job to do is to grow. That's all they do is they get as big as they can until it's time to become a chrysalis. The butterfly's job is to actually lay eggs. Caterpillars can't lay eggs. 
caterpillars can't make new caterpillars. All they can do is just eat and eat and eat until they're big enough. And then it's time to change into a butterfly. As you see, no dot, this is a female laying eggs. So that's sort of why caterpillars have to turn into butterflies because those animals want to make new babies. And they want to lay eggs. Okay, and I showed you how to tell a monarch apart with that little dot. Some butterflies are very different. So here's a black swallowtail and here's a male on this side. Here's a female on this side. So a boy and a girl, and you can see the colors are very different. And then we have a tiger swallow, an Eastern tiger swallowtail. And that is really difficult because sometimes this might be a male, sometimes this might be a female. And how you tell the difference is the female has the blue at the bottom, but the male doesn't. And then sometimes a, a female tiger swallowtail is totally black. So these are challenging ones. And then sometimes you can tell by the antennae. So this is a Luna moth. And I don't know if you've ever seen one of these. These live here, these live here, but their antennae are different. So a male has big antennae. A female it's just little antennae. But that's because the male is hunting or searching by smelling with those antennae, smelling for those females. So insects have some really interesting ways of being different from each other. Okay, so do we have any more questions? Uh, I think we have some time for one more question. Uh, and this is from the class of Miss Van Nye. Uh, so this is a question about bees. Uh -huh. So they were wondering, why do bees have venom? And uh -huh. how are bee stings so strong? Okay, so bees have venom because that's the one way. And, and actually, I have to start off by saying that not all bees have venom, not all bees sting. So bees that usually, if they're going to sting, it's because they feel that their family or their home is in danger. So this is a way for them to protect their family, the other members of that colony. So I actually happen to have a bumblebee here. And let me see if I can show you my bumblebee. So here's my bumblebee. There's my bumblebee right there. And if you look carefully at the back end of my bumblebee, and let's see there, yeah, let me see if I can focus that a little bit. Right there, right there. That's the stinger right there. And there's a little bit of venom. The thing is with a bumblebee, it goes in and it goes out. So there's no harm to that bee. A honeybee, on the other hand, it's got a barbed type of stinger and when it goes in and it tries to pull out it's going to kill it's going to die that's going to be a hard thing it's not going to it's not going to make it but they have that venom so that it does make you know that animal or that other thing think twice about coming back and attacking or causing problems for them so it's a way to protect their families and and things like that there are other bees in the colony. Okay, so I think we've got one last question. <clears throat> and I think it's from Miss Carla's and Miss Carly's class. And it is about what bugs eat. Well, they eat all sorts of things. So to finish off, we're going to pretend to be caterpillars and butterflies to show you the different types of mouth. So remember, a caterpillar is eating a leaf. Now, when we want to eat an apple, um, how about you pretend to eat an apple? What does your mouth do? Yeah, um, um, that's right, up and down, up and down. Okay, so we're going to pretend to be caterpillars because they eat totally differently. So I want you to get your thumbs up like this. Put them on your cheeks. Bring your fingers around. 
you have a caterpillar mouth and a dragonfly mouth and a beetle mouth. Look at this. Okay, so let's pretend we're eating a bit of leaf. Okay, chomp, 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 Ah, I bet. Oh, that's a nice little snack. Nice little snack. Okay. Now we're going to become a butterfly. And so this time you need to get two fingers up, bring them together. And then what we're going to do. So I don't know, but I don't like to fly with my tongue hanging out. So I'm going to curl my tongue on, or the other scientific word is proboscis. I'm going to bring it close. And I'm gonna look for a flower. Oh, oh, there's oh, there's a nice purple flower. Oh, I think I'm gonna land on that flower. I'm gonna dip my proboscis down into that flower and suck up that nectar. Oh, that's so sweet. Oh, is there another flower around? Oh, there, there's one, there's one. Okay, dip it down into that and suck up that nectar. Mmm, just what I need, a little afternoon snack. So we have discovered today how amazing and different insects are and other creepy crawly things. We know that they have two antenna. We know that they have six legs. We know that they have three body parts. And we know that they move differently. They breathe differently from us. They eat different things, but they are very important in our environment. So I hope you get a chance to go outside and check out what insects are there. Justin, thank you so much for being my sidekick today and helping me with those questions. And I look forward to perhaps seeing you guys another time, and who knows, maybe even at Royal Botanical Gardens. So thanks very much everybody for joining me, Karine and Justin, Royal Botanical Gardens. Take care. <laughs>